Hello, hello everyone. It's Maddie with Spectrum Art Creations. And today we are going to wrap up our 12 Days of Christmas album. That's right, we are done. Kind of sad, you know, that it's over, but kind of happy because we're done. I mean, we get to enjoy this beauty uh, for this year and years to come. So today I'm going to do a couple of things. The first one is I'm going to walk you through the entire album first of, as to what I've done. And then that way you guys will have hopefully some inspiration and further ideas on what you can do with yours. And then I'm going to show you how to do the binding a little bit backwards, but there's a reason for that. Again, there's always a reason to my madness, right? Um, the reason for that is because once you've added your pages and you do your binding, you're pretty much committing to that being it, right? So I want to show you my layout so that you guys can get some ideas, as I mentioned, and then you guys can finish um, laying out your pages, your full layout, and then you can do the spine. So I just wanted to let you know why I'm doing it this way. So let me walk you really, really, really quick. And then I am going to show you how to do some of those items that I'm going to be mentioning here. So I will be, um, you know, pausing at certain places and inserting other snippets of videos, etc. So this is the front cover, which I will show you how I have achieved that. Uh, here, what I've done is I've got, of course, our gorgeous um, glitter paste, which we had talked about already. We have added uh, some embellishments to the fussy cut partridge in a pear tree. I have added glossy accents to my ornaments as well, and also to my toppers there. Um, what else did we do here? We've added, um, and we're going to cover all of this, how to put the spine together. And I've added this really pretty, um, vintage trim. Uh, and then on the back, I used one of the other pages. I used a 12, um, I'm sorry, the drums from the 12 drummers drumming, uh, to cover the back page. I'm not fully finished with it, but my page layout is done. So you can always come back and add more. You just can't, you know, undo the pages once you've done your binding. So here on the inside, I've created two large pockets. Let me get a piece of paper. So this is a large pocket as well as here on the back. Okay. Um, again, I'm not finished decorating it. Um, I might do some other stuff. I might do like a big flip here or something I haven't decided, but at least I have the structure done. I'm going to try and keep it at an angle so I don't kill you with the glare from the light. Oh, I wonder if it would look better with or without light. Nope, that's too many shadows. Sorry, I'll try my best to angle it. So this is our first page. Very simple. It is the partridge in a pear tree. I have popped the partridge in a pear tree placard on a 3D, with a 3D foam dot. Again, this one is just our cover. Of course, you can still insert photos, but we have the whole back where we can insert photos. So my backs, for the most part, I've left it pretty blank so that I can come back and add, you know, my photos later. Then I've added this extra page here. And to add this extra page, all that I've done is I've taken those two cards that were included in your topper, the partridge in a pear tree and the partridge here as well. Uh, and I've created these little flips with our leftover cardstock. And then this is just a piece of scrap that I put in here to remind me that I have a pocket. I've used scraps of the silver as well here and scraps from the leftover little bands that we had to create a cute little um, thing there. Also here, the same thing. This is just a piece of scrap to remind me that there is a pocket here. So now I can add photos here, photos here, and still insert photos or tickets to a movie or maybe an event that we've done um, in those there. And then behind that, and again, this is just like a partial page that I had. So it's not a full, full page, as you can see. It is what I had. And I've inserted um, some large, larger tags here on the side by leaving that pocket open. If you are interested in creating these, all you need is a oh, wrong ruler. Get the right ruler for the job. You will need a three and three eighths. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, three and three eighths by seven and an eighth piece. 
And again, just approximate. You can round those off if you want. It can be a little bigger. You see you have space here, uh, and you of course have space here as well. So that's how I made those. You'll need two of those. And then of course your leftover pieces of um, scrap from your paper line as well as some uh, cardstock to go in there, okay? So then that was the next page. Here on the back, I have used the partridge in a pear tree. That is a large one, so I've created a big pocket there. For this one, I will show you here in a video quickly how I've done this, but this one is super easy to do. Uh, and this one, of course, is gorgeous. This is kind of like a showstopper, which I love using this die set that we have in the online store because it's great for inserting the pages and the holes line up perfectly as well with this and other albums as well. So, you know, it's just a really beautiful way to insert and use your acetate. So I've created those ready for matting. This one we had done together. This is the uh, two turtle doves. And this one has a mat here, which I've left open. If you guys remember, we had left it open so that we can insert our photo without any issues. It opens up this way. We had left a pocket here in the front. And then this opens up magnetically into a Z fold. So we have room to put our photos here, 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 and here and yet we still have a pocket here and we still have a pocket here. And yes, I put these little flags here to remind me because sometimes I forget where I put the pockets. <laughs> so I like to kind of remember. And then we've got these gorgeous mats here. Again, we can do lists or we can do a, a multiple photos, maybe even a panoramic. And then here we've got um, where we can put, you know, best memories or, uh, you know, whatever, 2023, 20, 24, whatever year we're going to be using this in. So that folds that way. And that is our two turtle doves. Again, we have the gorgeous doves on the back and we still have room for photos if we want to. Here is our three French hen pet page. This one is just a photo mat where we can insert photos in the pocket, of course. And then this one was the trifold that flipped up to reveal the three French hens with a Merry Christmas on it. And then it has room, of course, on all those plus here for photos. And then here I use my French hen um, journaling card and I've created a pocket. And again, I've inserted one of our scrap um, cardstock and scrap decorative paper in the pocket. So that is the three French hen. Um, and again, these, these ideas can be used with any paper line. So once you're done putting together this album for the 12 days of Christmas and you're like, you know what, I'm going to do that with any other one of my lines, you can certainly do the exact same thing, follow the same steps and get the exact same album just with different looks and interchange the pages, right? Here on the back, all I've done is I actually just threw that in there so I wouldn't lose it, but that is just the um, three French hen little piece. I'm thinking that once I add photos, maybe I'll add it here to the front as a little embellishment or tuck. Um, and I have tons of ephemera left. Like I have bagfuls. I could probably do two albums. <laughs> here is the four calling birds. I did fix my little guy down here. As I had mentioned in the video, I had glued him on wrong. I did fix him. And what I did here was I came back in and I added just a simple signature the way I had shown you in that other page. I just stitched it even after it was already in. So now I've got this, 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 and this to add photos to or to just write ideas and feelings, sentiments, a poem, you know, whatever I want to do there. So I've created additional um, mats on there for us. And then of course, again, we have the four calling birds, all dimensional. Then here in the back, I've used that large journaling card again to just create a pocket, but I can add my photos here and here as well. Some, um, you know, additional mats. I'll show you here in the back. And then I fussy cut the little bird. Remember that we had the other one and I had said you could put him down here or whatever, but I fussy cut him or her and I've, um, popped it up on foam dots, the same thing as the heart here. And now I've got four different mats here that I can add my photos to, right? And then on the back, you can see what they look like. Again, I have all those to add to. 
the five golden rings we had finished together except for adding our gorgeous mats. So here I didn't mat the um I didn't mat the top flaps yet. Again, these are things that I can come back and do, but now it opens up to reveal the mats for each of our flaps here on the bottom. And I've popped that up on foam as well, dimensionals. Here I've added the um, five golden rings. And yes, I have five little golden rings here on this cute little bow. Um, this is of course a top tuck, but I've also added another eyelet here so that it also goes with the five golden rings. And I've hid that behind this foam, um, I'm sorry, the five golden rings placard here. So that does go through to the other side, but it's hidden. This one is pretty neat. This one, what I've done is I have um, cut the slits on, I've cut slits on the pockets themselves. And so I've cre created these little flaps. What I wanted to do was not to cover the photo. So once I add my photo on here, I will actually tack this down behind the photo. So this will not be floating anymore. It will be in place, right? And then I can still add, you know, maybe the information, you know, of what we were doing on that day. And then still have it closed, um, you know, have it decorative this way. And I can still add something if I wanted to, to these. But now I've got these extra flips that are gonna be, you know, even more room for me to add stuff to. So that was super fun, just cutting those out and inserting those. And I just, what I did here, by the way, this is just, as you can see, it's just a piece of paper hinge. Then I matted it and just to reinforce that um, topper piece, right? And then, like I said, they will be permanent in place once the photo is added on there. Okay, and I haven't removed, as you can see, my, um, my backings but I, I do have to do that. Like I said, I haven't fully finished yet, <laughs> but I wanted to wrap it up for you guys uh, instead of you know continuing to work on it as I add photos and whatnot. Okay, so here we've got the back of those double pockets again, just that cream cardstock to back it up. And some of these of course had like things that were orientation sensitive on this side, but not this side. So I've added mats to ensure that, you know, that's not gonna be an issue. Here we have the six geese Elaine, and we've got our book, which we had done together. As I had mentioned after the fact, I thought, why didn't I actually, because this is like the perfect shape. It looks just like a Christmas ornament, just like these. Why did not I not flip this, add gold here, just like that, create like a little cap. So it looks like one, two, three ornaments. In retrospect, that would have been awesome but it still looks amazing the way it is, right? So no worries there, just a little something extra if you have not adhered yours that you could do or on your next one. Here, what I've done is I've added an acetate pocket here and I think this might be a double pocket. Yep, it sure is. See, I have to leave my little banners in here so I remember. So I can add stuff here and then of course my sentiment, then add stuff to my big acetate pocket which has got the gorgeous geese. This one is just a scrap piece of paper. So this was scrap, this was scrap, and this was scrap. And all I did was I seamed it together with the golden beautiful band, but now it looks super pretty and I can add, you know, anything I want on there as well. See how gorgeous that is? Oh, how pretty, right? So we have that extra page. On this, of course, we have done this together. This is the magnetized uh, little book that we had done together. I, again, I have room for all of, you know, two additional photos here on the inside, and then I can journal all the things that we've done. And then we've got that gorgeous double pocket here that we had done as well. One is notched, one is not. Uh, and all I did was I added my, um, my uh, eyelets, and then I went ahead and added some of my ribbon, and I've matted the backs on those, okay and added those in there. Like I said, I haven't even rounded corners or anything. It's, you know, not fully finished. Actually, yeah, they might look good just like that. And then we added the um, Seven Swans of Swimming again using foam dots. The back is clear for me to do whatever I like. This is yet another piece of scrap that was left over. So I've added it in here. This is a pocket up here. 
and I've inserted a tag, but I haven't done anything with it. All I did was cut out the tag. So I got to come back and, you know, reinforce it, add my mats, do my eyelids, and maybe a ribbon. But it's got a nice, generous pocket there with the seven swans of swimming. Here are more of the swans. Again, I've got all this, and then I've got these four mats with the ornaments. Here's the back to those. Here, oh, sorry. Here, I've used the mill, uh, maids are milking. So I've used this little piece that I had left because it kind of matched the ornaments right there, right? Then, so I've got room here to add more of my photos. This will flip this way. And then here, this will flip this way. I've got two of my mats here, and then I've created a nice skinny one where I can either go this way with it, or I can do, a, again, two more lists going this way. I just thought that was a super fun. And that was one of those leftover strips. That's all that was. I just had to use it somewhere. So I thought that was a fun flip. Here we continue continue on with the eight maids are a milking. We've done this one together, right? And I don't know that I added mats, did I? Yeah, I did. I actually matted these now. So that goes in there showing our beautiful rings and our ornaments. And then here we've got all this blank space. This is the nine ladies dancing. We had done this together, reinforced it. We had added um, this extra flap on here. I did change it up some though. I added photo mats here and my smaller of the ladies dancings from the topper pad. And then here I've created a belly band using my leftovers and I have created a um, bookmark that goes into that beautiful spot. And if you notice her, oops, her dress matches my seam binding perfectly. So, you know, this is why it's so nice to have lots of different colors for seam binding. So I just so happen to have colors that match perfect. But now we've got a bookmark there and I still have this that I can do all kinds of stuff with. So like I said, there's a lot of different possibilities to, to work with any of these pages to change them up and add your own touches, right? So then we flip over. I was going to hide this and I had mentioned that in the video, but after I looked at it, I was like, why? It looks great. So I just left it. <laughs> maybe a little thin strip of the gold. Maybe that would be a nice touch for that. Now, do you remember the corners that we had made using my, um, our uh, precision tool corner notches? Well, I told you we were going to use them. So here they are. I simply grabbed one of the leftover pieces. I created um, a mat which of course this is on in the on the front with some pop dots so this just slides out so I can insert my photos or memories on there so you see we can use the corners to dress up stuff never throw anything away uh, here we have another gorgeous backing we know the lords are leaping right our moving belly band and it's a belly band you guys we did this one together then the back, then here I've added some more photos. So photo mats, excuse me, with my leftover scraps. Uh, and I've covered them already with some mats. I've got more Lords a leaping. They're just leaping everywhere. And as I have mentioned, I wish I would have thought of the wobble even on these right here, you know? That would have been so fun. Here are some more backs to those mats. We did this one together so you guys know. Oh, in case you missed it. Um, this flips up, this opens. And then it opens again to reveal these are pockets here. Ooh, let me angle it right. Wait. Why is it not working? Second. Wait, did I close? No, I didn't close them. No, they're just tight. Sorry. <laughs> they're just a little tight. I need to work them out a little bit more. But these are pockets right here. One, two. And then we've got these mats. We've got this mat. We've got these mats. We've got this one. And then we've got a pocket back here. We've got our hinge. Um, what else was on here? I think that was it. Oh, I should leave this here. I'll forget there's a pocket later. There. Um, yes, so that one we did together. Again, there's a video for that one. Here, remember, we had to hide that the prongs from the really pretty Brad. Well, what I did was I used just a piece of scrap and I created a pocket. So this is a pocket here. I don't, oh, and that's a pocket there. I have to leave a, a little flag on there to remind myself. So my Brad, 
prongs are right back here, but you can't see them at all. And now not only do we have a double pocket, but we've got here that we can use, right? Leave that there. Find something bigger. Uh, I think I can. I think I can. There we go. Uh, and then here I've used, uh, again, leftovers. These two um, ones have little flips on them. Oh, look how cute he is. Piper's piping. And then these two are just regular. It's got the Piper's piping uh, little smaller um, topper piece with a foam dot. And then that flips over to reveal the larger one. And again, our four mats. And see, they look great when you mix and match them, right? They don't all have to be uniform. Just use all of your scraps. Um, this is another one of those leftover pieces. So I just created this fun bit. And again, I'll show you here uh, in a video in a second how to create that one. But that just opens. This is just um, uh, wire, wired um, trim. So it kind of holds its place. And then it opens up this way. So you can add a photo here, here here then that flips up for here and here as well so you've got a triple tag on here and then it just kind of closes and i just added little cute dots just for decorations as well as this right here so it kind of closes itself we've got all of this back back here to do something oh i'm out of breath can you guys believe how much we fit into this thing i mean it's incredible and then we've got our 12 drummers drumming, right? So we've got the 12 of them there. And that's just that. I don't think I did a pocket with that, did I? No, I just adhered it. Um, and then this flips up to reveal our gorgeous drum. I just love that drum. And then here we've got our photo mat. This is once again on dimensional. And we've got our two mats here and then our back, back pocket. And I did add, and I'll show you all this here in a second, some trim on there. But we now have all of that into one album okay so now that you guys have seen what i have done and here's the cover again sorry it kind of went blurry i am going to walk you how to do your spine so once you're happy with it you can go ahead and either go back and remove well some of these i can't even see but i can remove some of these tapes it's super easy just to use your hook tool to go in here and remove those of course I'm trying to do it on camera and not bring it towards me I have to bring it towards me um, but it's easy to come back here and remove these or you can remove them ahead of time if you'd like um, and then you won't have to finagle with them as such why am I not you know my hands are frozen can you guys believe it's freezing in Florida that's a scary thing. We're gonna go down to like the 30s. Last night it was a uh, 40s, I think. Yeah, so we can remove these right here. Just trying to get my freezer in there. As such, and so you can go through and just remove them and then just press them down and then they'll kind of, see, self stick to themselves. So you can do that before or after, whatever works for you. But what I wanted to get to the point was to for you to be happy with your layout it doesn't mean you have to be finished with your pages you can come back and add anything to these but at least the layout of it right what's going to go where where your pockets are going to be where your full pages are going to be where your inserts are going to be once you're happy with that then you're going to insert them and then we can get to creating our spine and completing that book so let's get right into that. I hope you guys are enjoying this though. I hope I, you know, I, I can't wait to see yours. Okay, but let me let me just get to getting putting this together and then showing you how to do some of those extra little things that I mentioned that were done in here, okay? Now I've already cut out my fussy cut pieces for my cover and they're drying right up here. I have also finished my cover with the gorgeous glitter and stencil and so that's done my pages are all in the order that i want them to be so now we can work on the spine we put it together just the way i showed you how to insert the pages and all that so here is what my album is going to look like now my width of my spine 
is going to be one and five sixteenth. That is the exact measurement. However, we do not want to be that exact because remember, you still need to add some photos, some ephemera, some memorabilia, right? So you want to give it a little bit more. So, and again, yours might be totally different. You might have gone with more dimension, less dimension, more pages, less pages. Uh, so you measure yours. I'm just giving you mine so that you know how I'm working mine. So at 5 16th, it's going to be a perfect fit. I do not want a perfect fit. So I'm either going to go with one and a half or I can go with one and three quarters. Just give it, you know, a quarter of an inch, a half an inch, whatever you feel you're going to be adding into this. Give it that little bit of extra. We also know our height. Our height is, well, the album is eight and a half, right? The pages. However, if you want to be exact, the cover is eight and five eighths. So I'm going to head over and cut my chipboard. I'm going to find a piece, first of all, that I believe is going to be wide enough and tall enough. Now, my chipboard spine is, doesn't have to be the full eight and five eighths. Close to it is good enough because we're going to cover it with paper. So we just need this for strength and stability. So I'm going to mark my one and a half. And then I'm going to go cut that down. Again, your measurements might be totally different. So go with that. And by the way, before I do forget, uh, today's video is going to be a little longer. It's going to be the longest. It's going to be over an hour. And that's because at the end, I'm also going to show you some examples uh, of some additional projects that you can make with the leftovers. Okay, so there we have our width. I'm going to test it out just to make sure. Yes, it is a little wide and that's okay. I want it to be. I want some room to grow. Not too much. You don't want it all flimsy and floppy, but you do want to give it just a smidge, as I mentioned. Okay, now we're going to cut our height as well because this was a little long. And again, the trimmer's behind me now, so I am not I usually keep my trimmer at a station right behind me. Um, in a little center aisle that I have or island that I have in the uh, craft studio. Um, so this time I just didn't bring it on screen. I figure I have way too much of a mess on screen. <laughs> so, so you guys know I'm cutting behind me. Okay, there we go. So now I've got my spine piece out of my gorgeous graphic 45 chipboard. Now I need a paper that's going to be tall enough and wide enough for my spine. I already know what my measurements are. So all I'm going to do is trim that down to those measurements, at least the height as well. And again, if you want to be precise, it is eight and five eighths. And then I need enough of a paper that is going to go all the way around and wrap around from there to my spine and to the other side. Could you go wider than I did? Sure. You know, it depends on what you've done on your cover. You can come in a lot more than I did. I'm going to kind of stick with that black, um, trim here that's on the cover and that trim is a half an inch so you know you need at least a half an inch in order to wrap around however if you do half an inch once you score that's going to reduce your paper some right so really you need a five eighths if you are not going to add any other decorative strips or if you want it to be perfect uh, precise then you would need five eighths in my case i know that i am just going to add some trims anyway so it doesn't really matter i am simply going to um, bring the scoreboard after i've cut my height and my width from my spine piece and it's going to kind of wrap like this. And I do apologize, a lot of it is off screen, but it's really hard to do, um, you know, <laughs> while holding it uh, in the center of the table. So I'm gonna bring my scoreboard and what we're going to do is I'm going to score one of my sides at a half an inch. Again, if you want yours to go all the way precisely to cover the black, you need to add five eighths of an inch plus your spine. So five eighths of an inch, another five eighths of an inch plus your spine. 
whatever that width is. But I'm gonna go with half and I'm gonna show you the easiest way that I know how to do this because it's super easy. You guys know I do not necessarily love to do math or fractions or decimals. So here's what I do. I get my half an inch. I know that when I put it on, it's gonna be a little bit short. I'll show you here in a second. See, it's gonna be a smidge short, which by the way, does not look bad. It's nice to have that black. And then this is gonna be sufficient to wrap around. So that's the way that I do mine. And then to make things even easier, instead of scoring both sides at half an inch, I do it a little bit differently. I bring in my spine and I adhere that onto my spine piece. So I score, I know I have one side scored, that gives me the perfect placement for my chipboard spine piece. So then I grab my chipboard spine and I adhere it using that fold that I've already created, right? on my decorative piece. I'm very generous with glue in case you <laughs> haven't noticed when it comes to the spine because I know this is going to take a lot of, you know, work. It's going to be the, the workhorse with holding all those pages. And I want my album to be really sturdy for years to come so it can be enjoyed. You know, I can put it on the coffee table and folks can just, you know, break it out every year and then look at it. So now I use my spine piece and I fold the other half over. So no scoring, no measuring, that's it. I'm done. <laughs> See how simple? I tell you, I make things easy because I don't like math. And see, that front is perfect. The back does have a little bit of black showing, but I don't care because I am going to be covering all of this anyway. Okay, there we go. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So now you guys know how to expand your um, snap binders. And of course, now we need to come in here, as I had mentioned before, and remove all of those before you um, put in the spine. You don't have to. You can always do it after the fact. But if you do, obviously, before you put in your spine, it's just going to make it that much easier. Okay. And then plus those um, adhesive foams, the adhesiveness, it's going to bind and glue those pages together. So it also gives a stability. Okay. I'm not going to touch those a lot. I need to let them dry because they have a lot of stickles and a lot of um, glossy accents uh, to them. So I'm just going to set them off and then let them dry. And then I'm going to come back and continue to work on this with you guys. So this is what we've got so far. So with the magic of editing, um, we're going to pretend that it's all dried. I've added my spine on now. So I'm just pressing down here to ensure that I have some good adhesion. I'm adding some pressure, but my spine is now in place. It looks fabulous, at least, well, this is the beginning of my spine. And there is no alligatoring mouth. I have room for growth. Everything looks lovely. And here's the good news. Now you guys know that you can do this with any of your snap albums. Okay, we need a little strip here, as I had mentioned. And, and here's something funny. I'll come back to it later. But I noticed after I adhered it, that even though I gave you the measurements of eight and five eighths for your height, I went ahead and cut mine at eight and a half anyway. But it's good because it happened to me. I can show you how we fix that. Super simple, right? So sometimes things don't go as planned <laughs> and we improvise. Okay, gold or silver? Mm, I'm thinking silver. We have a lot of gold, but I do have some gold strips ready too. I'm going to gently grab that just to kind of see mm, which one, which one, that or this. What do you guys think? I think we have a lot of gold, don't you? So I'm going to end up going with silver. <laughs> Uh, and then, of course, how wide of a strip you decide that you need. It will depend a lot on what you've done with your cover, uh, how you plan to embellish it. You might not be adding any of the gold, gorgeous, you know, um, texture paste uh, 
glitter texture piece. You might be doing something completely different. So maybe gold would look great for you. Maybe you've decided to use a completely different uh, front cover altogether. Your image is not a partridge. Yours might be some of the journaling cards that are left or whatever it is that you decide to do. Obviously, you will decide on the width of your strips. So here I've cut some gold just to make sure and to look at it. It does look pretty though, doesn't it? I know it all looks pretty. <laughs> so that's the problem that it's all nice. Um, oh, before, before I forget, I do want to give you today's secret word. And I'm also going to recap the other words as well. So the secret word for today is going to be Christmas. So let's recap. Number one was paper. Number two was fold. Part three was rings. Video four was sliders. Part five, festive. Now six and seven, I think I messed up. So six, you can either use birds or geese. It doesn't matter, either one. Seven was geese. That's where I think I repeated it. Eight was stencil. And today's number nine, video nine or part nine is Christmas, okay? So, all right, now we've got all of our words straight. Make sure you go back and watch those videos and leave a comment so that you can be entered into the secret giveaway. And, okay, here's a silver. And they ended up going with the silver because you see those white little elements there on the partridge in a pear tree. Uh, it's got like white snowflakes and it's got some really pretty, um, uh, I don't know, they're some kind of berry like white berries and I thought that was so pretty and that would go with that plus we had plenty of gold but again yours will depend on what it is that you have decided to use for your cover in order to decorate another thing you might want to consider when it comes to embellishing your front cover is adding some kind of trim whether it's some ribbon that you have or some fibers even if you don't have either maybe you have some fabric that you can tear and that would look really shabby cool with those threads you know um, hanging as well so definitely add something that is a bit soft and not only does it add elegance it adds the visual interest plus the tactile right so that's always great to add so consider some ribbon i will add some ribbon to mine so we won't be able to see the silver fully just you know a little bit of the peaking here and there um, which again is also super nice as well okay so i need to cut those down now that i agree on the width i just need the height and then this is when i realized i was looking at it and i went oh wait a minute oh i did cut that wrong i don't even know why i didn't click when i adhered it that it is um, eight and a half as opposed to eight and five eighths. So I'm like, yep, got to fix that. So super easy. Again, this is why it's good that boo-boos happen and I do not edit them because I can show you how to fix those. Do not think, oh no, you know, now what? Not only will I add another layer to this, which is going to add extra strength to our spine. So even if you didn't mean to do it, it's not a bad thing to do it anyway. Um, so again, paper, crafting is one of the most forgiving crafting out there really almost all art whether it's mixed media or journal making anything that you do um, is pretty forgiving because you can always add to it you can always you know patch it up somehow and most of the time it actually just adds extra beauty uh, extra interest to it so don't ever shy away or get frustrated when something goes wrong as a matter of fact if you ever get stuck with anything come back to our Facebook group, Spectrum Art Creation Friends, and ask, say, look, this is what just happened. What what would you guys do? Any suggestions? Or if you get stuck on an embellishment and you're like, oh, this page needs something, or whatever the question is, post it and see if um, you get some great responses and ideas. At least it'll kind of get those juices flowing, right? Okay, so I've cut it back to size the way that I need which again is eight and five eighths, not eight and a half. And all I'm going to do is adhere that back on here. I'm just gonna um, rescore it and then re-adhere it. So like I said, we can always hide stuff. We can add to it. And then this trim is gonna go right here and it's gonna look fabulous anyway. And no one will ever know that there was an extra layer underneath of it. And now I've added extra strength. Okay, so scored ready to go 
and I'm going to hear that and look none the wiser, just as pretty, right? Okay. Now, after this, what we need to do, and this is just extra, so I'm going to just zip right through it because hopefully you did not make the mistake I made because you cut yours right because I gave you the right measurements from go. But if this ever happens to you, again, either feel free to fix it really easily this way or any other questions, ask in the Facebook group. Okay, with that done, we are back on track as if it had never happened. Here we go. Look at that. Perfect. All right, nice and strong and stable. We have our gorgeous spine. Now we just need to add those beautiful silver pieces in order to decorate. And also, you know, well, it helps to hide the seam, which I mean, it doesn't really matter, but it does ease the flow of the transition, right? Plus, it adds a little something extra. Always those extra little bits is what makes your projects fabulous, right? Okay, so I'm going to add these to the front and back. And then I'm also going to add them to the inside. So I'm sure you guys don't need to watch me just taking my time gluing these on here. Uh, it's something that you can definitely do really quickly on your own. Plus, um, if you wanted to, you didn't have to cut them to size, you could just glue them and then just with your scissor snip the bottom and it would be perfect to fit, right, to size. So that yet yeah, that's just another way to expedite the process. How's that? So I'm going to do this here front and back and then also on the inside just for the continuity as well of the uh, layout. Okay, the back strip is on. Now we're gonna super speed through the inside because we're just doing the same thing. We're adding the bands of um, silver on the front and on the back. And again, see, it just that transition looks so much nicer with the silver pieces. Okay, so now we're gonna add this one here to the back. And then our glossy, um, accent pieces are done so I can move on to my stickles now oh look how pretty those look with the glossy accents they look like glass ornaments but we can move on to stickles now this is going to take quite a bit of time it's it's a labor of love and patience and so I'm just going to speed through it now if you notice the one tip I can give you is I always um add my stickles onto just a scrap piece of paper and then I use a brush to brush it on. Two reasons why. Number one, because I do not want this thing squirting everywhere. And you guys know how that is. It's got that air sometimes in there and you go to squeeze and before you know it, you just go pop and it just goes everywhere, right? So to control that, I am tapping it on my table and then I am just squeezing a little bit onto a scratch piece of paper and brushing it on. The other reason why I like to brush it on is it gives me total control of where I want to place it and it doesn't have to be thick, right? I can spread it with my brush and make it just a very nice, almost like a shimmer to it. Um, but man, does it look gorgeous. And of course, I'm adding, I'm mimicking the colors that are on those feathers. So the teals, the pinks, the yellows, the magentas, all those colors are being mimicked. Okay, now. With that done, I had promised you guys that I was going to show you uh, just a couple of pages, how I had done it and how that die set works as well. So that if you guys want to add that to your arsenal, right? To your ideas for future pages or this journal as well, this album, but also for future ones, as I mentioned, then you can have that in your bag as well. So let's take a look at those. So to make that half page with this die, which is MD610 in our online store or our Etsy store, uh, is super easy. As I mentioned, this is one of those dies that just, yeah, it comes in handy all the time. It's got some really great elements. Number one, it's got this Viewmaster 
half page which you can use to do all kinds of embellishments it's got the double flaps and covers as well those two little squares but for today i'm only going to be using this uh, outer piece right here so all you need to do is put your piece of paper down and die cut that as i mentioned and you can see right on screen it comes with the holes pre-cut or um, pre-punched or pre-marked <laughs> um so it actually cuts the holes so that it fits on multiple different configurations. Of course, if it does not have the holes that you need because maybe you're doing something very specific or you're binding it yourself, you can always go ahead and create your own holes by marking whatever it is that you need. But it is such a beautiful, beautiful die. It cuts this intricate lace type of an eyelid frame look at that like butter isn't that gorgeous okay and that's as simple as that to cut that piece so again if you are in need of this or any dice we have like hundreds of dice literally uh available for you make sure that you check out the etsy store that's where we have the most dies available so if you're love dies We've got you covered. Okay, now we're gonna bring that acetate piece back. And now all you need to do is either freehand trace or you can find something of whatever measurement you need in order to trace that outer edge to create your acetate piece. Now I could have just traced the logo on the table because <laughs> I think it would have worked perfectly, but I went ahead and got a kitchen plate just to kind of show you that I just did this and figured, huh, okay, that's about right. So I'm using a kitchen plate and all I'm going to do is just trace with a permanent marker so you guys can see it really well. Sorry about the glare. I know that light, it's, you know, it's a necessity, unfortunately, but yes, it doesn't always work very well on camera with um, anything that's got plastic on it. Okay, and then all I'm gonna do is freehand, go around, cut this out. I don't know if you guys can hear the beeping, the oven beeping, <laughs> I hope not. Lunch is ready, gotta go get it out of the oven. I'm baking some chicken. I figure it's a perfect day. It's freezing here in Florida, guys. It's like in the 40s, and then it's gonna go down uh, to the go down in the 30s, which is nuts uh, for Florida, but it's been a cold, been a cold winter so far and I mean and we're only in the beginning of December so I can only imagine what January is going to be like <laughs> I'm sure if you are anywhere south of I'm sorry north of North Florida you are freezing as well actually I was kind of shocked because a lot of our um, friends in the Facebook group were sharing their temperatures and they live up north and we're like right there with them so <laughs> that's kind of scary it's been a it's been a cold one so far here in Florida. So my thinking was, it's a perfect time to turn on the oven because <laughs> I get lunch and we warm up the house. Okay, so now that that is done, super simple, just to freehand cut that, we're gonna bring back our template in order to create the holes on the acetate piece right here. So I'm just gonna place that and then mark my holes. And then I will show you here on the paper one as well. If you line this up, you will see that the holes fit perfect. And again, it's got multiple holes, so it'll fit in different configurations, like different albums, you know, that kind of thing. But it works perfect with your snap albums. So, ta-da! And there we go. That was quite simple and quite lovely to do. So you can do these for all of your journals which would be glorious, right? Always nice to have delicate, intricate pieces like the ones that the die cuts. And you can use the other pieces too to embellish it even further, create like view masters, uh, fill those little holes with thoughts or, hey, it would have been cool to do like, you know, it's got six, right? So we could have done six days and then the other six days, so 12 days of Christmas. That would look amazing on the cover. I just thought of that. Okay, anyway see flashes of lightning just strike um 
And so yes, yeah, so this is a great dye to add to your stash. And now we're just gonna add that on to our album. And then this other one I told you I was gonna show you how to make. I'm using the Spectrum Art Creations or SAX for short. Um, corner precision tool so I am just deciding um, what angle do I want do I want it to be a quarter of an inch a half an inch they range from a quarter of an inch all the way up to two inches so and the nice thing is you can always start small cut if you like it great if you don't if you're like mm, I should have gone bigger then you just go ahead and place the next size up and cut again so but no more measuring, no more wondering if your corners are going to match, if you're going to ruin your beautiful piece or tag that you're working with, because these tools take that guesswork out of that. And they are acrylic, and that makes them clear to see through. And then they also, I designed them so that they have a hole at the top so that you can put them on a ring binder and keep them next to your desk at all times. Or better yet, if you're going to go to a crop or something, you can just uh, use the ring binder and attach it to your bag and it's ready to go. Okay, so we're going to need three of those tags. Again, not measurement specific, but I can give you measurements. Your half page might be a different size. It might be the same. You might be choosing to add this onto a totally different page. Well, first, I'm going to grab my scrap and I'm going to create my holes. This way, my page is ready to go into my album. Um, the tag that I cut, the ones that I cut were three by four and a half. So three inches wide by four and a half inches tall. Again, totally up to you if you have different size scraps. But now I've got three of those gorgeous tags. I'm gonna mark here with my little tick mark. How far can I come in, right? So I know I cannot go past that because that's where the page is going to bend and the rest of it is going to go underneath the spine. Can put my tools off to the side and the guide as well. And now we can use all of these scraps to create the mats for our tags. Before we do that though, we do need to hinge them. So let's do that first. How are we going to do that? Again, just scraps, whatever you have on your table that's left over. You're going to need something that is at least as tall as the side before you before the angle cut right so in my case let me measure mine and i'll tell you that my and again your how much of an angle you cut will also you know dictate how big your little spine piece can be but mine were like three and a half yeah three and a half and all I did was cut little slivers and I am just cutting them, I'm sorry, folding them in half. So these are probably like mm, three quarters of an inch in wide and width. So just whatever scraps were there and they are being folded in half, no scoreboard, just kind of eyeballing it and then pinching it. We're not gonna see any of this. It's gonna get hidden behind our beautiful decorative paper. Burnish them down. Make sure the paper is working. And then we're going to adhere that on to two of the tags. So one hinge is going to go on one side of one of the tags. Again, since I'm using just plain cardstock, it doesn't matter. Like all of it is going to blend beautifully. I am folding it over to ensure that my fold line my crease is right on the edge of that tag like so okay and then once that is on there i am simply going to make sure that i bring in the next one going to adhere that one to the other half of that hinge piece and by the way these are amazing to just make the bases and have them ready you don't even need to add the decorative panels. You can mass make these, have them ready for whenever you want to insert it into the next album or journal, or just to give away as gifts because, well, 
they make great gifts you can add a uh, little pocket you can you know add gift cards in here you can add a photo on one a poem on the other one a sentiment you can decorate them you can use your scrap pieces of paper so great for scraps as well now this one we need to trim down just a little bit because that's going to go up here and we need it to be just a hair shorter so let's trim just like an eighth of an inch off of the bottom just so that when we attach it and hinge it, it's not going to stick out. Okay, and then we need a little hinge for here at the top. So again, tiny scraps. See, you can make a whole lot of these with all of your scraps and have them ready to go. Okay, uh, let's go with this piece. I think I got it too short. Let's try again. Okay. Perfect. So we're just going to add glue to one side of the hinge. Stick that down at the top. And you can go in front or behind. It doesn't matter because you're going to add panels to both the front and the back and not have to worry. Plus, since you're using your corner tool, right, hopefully from Spectrum Art Creations, then you don't have to worry about your angles because your angles are always going to be perfect too. And now see how we hinge this on the bottom here it's going to be perfect right there because we needed just a little bit of paper off of the bottom in order to get the perfect fit. But as I was saying, you can always make the bases, right? And then you can mat them later on demand since you're using the sax tool. It will ensure that your corners are always going to match no matter when you come back to it. Okay, we need to shave a little bit off the side here. If it's kind of too tight, you can always just trim it down because remember, these are made perfect. They're the exact same replica, replica of each other. So I'm just gonna shave a little sliver here in order for it not to get stuck on that fold. There we go. And then I'm gonna trim some right here where it's sticking out just a little bit and voila we have our finished trifold little tag flip super fun to make very easy as you can see easily done with lots of scraps and like i said i'm gonna add my mats and maybe make mass make some of these and mat them on demand as i need in the future or just sit down one afternoon with a bunch of them and yeah, madam from the scraps. That'll be fun to do all kinds of mix and match for other collections as well. Okay, let's go ahead and wrap it up because we are done, guys. I just wanted to show you those two optional pages that I had inserted in there in case you guys wanted to know the specifics on them. But that's it. We are at the end. Of course, as I mentioned, I'm going to come back. I'm going to add uh, some more trims and fibers to my tags on the inside because I haven't done that. I'm going to add photos, sentiments, additional embellishments, but you guys have now completed the full 12 days of Christmas album. Congratulations and thank you so much for joining us. Have you had fun? I hope you have. I hope that you guys also enter the giveaways. So do not forget the more comments we get, the more giveaways I'm going to do, or maybe even the bigger the giveaway. So make sure that you also share this with your friends uh, so they can go ahead and create the 12 Days of Christmas albums with us, right? And also so they can leave a comment and that increases the pool of the giveaways that we're going to do. So now we have worked through an entire fully interactive album with tons of journaling and photo opportunities, secret pockets, and all kinds of fun stuff just everywhere. Little touches here and there. So I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I hope you will try it with other paper lines as well. Do not forget to post in the Facebook group and don't forget that I'm going to be leaving some additional inspirations for this paper line so you guys can also do more stuff because a lot of you um, not only got the kit, but some of you even got full pads from us as well. So if that is the case, I'm going to leave some other inspiration here behind and those are just amazing makes from other artists and you can be inspired to do something else with your collections as well. Okay, so stay tuned for more inspiration and of course, other information. 
look at this beauty here are these gorgeous tags and this beautiful card as well again make sure you guys post what you're making in the facebook group for some bonus entries spectrum art creation friends don't forget to answer the questions when you request membership into the group because we love to see you there with us as well and i love this one that is so pretty and how about some banners maybe to go across your fireplace or mantle or window also don't forget to check out our online stores for all of the products that you have seen here and thousands more spectrumartcreations.com and on etsy spectrum art creations also to join us on saturdays for our live sales come back to the channel on saturdays at 4 p.m eastern standard time and join us for a whole lot of fun and you can purchase product online such as this class that we're doing today that was pre-sold at our live sales uh, and of course we uh, explained how classes work and speaking of all kinds of gorgeous makes here are some additional ones but make sure that you um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already we love to have you become part of the Saks family and enjoy additional tutorials and lives we do come live and craft together with you guys from time to time and we can make beautiful elements like these oh look at these makes love those cards so pretty and this one is so stinking adorable i love that blue trim as well speaking of makes spectrum art creations academy is a place you definitely want to be if you have not joined join today in order to start and start enjoying all of these perks and so much more there is so much going on at the academy like exclusive classes videos workshops game nights craft alongs and all kinds of other additional bonuses so make sure you guys click at the end of this video on the button that says spectrum art creations academy click here to learn more so that you can go and find out how for a flat monthly fee you can enjoy classes at in the comfort of your home and join us live from time to time as well here are some more cards and projects look at all these tags aren't those adorable and that's done with that die set that i think we're going to give away so again make sure you guys enter Check out this other video for more inspiration. Thank you so much for joining us for the 12 days of Christmas. It has been a blast uh, working through this entire album with you guys. And we will see you all at that next video. Thanks for joining us. Bye.